Hello YouTube and welcome to a brand new tutorial. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to show you how to get started with Java programming. I'm going to show you how to get these three files here. The three files you're going to need for those of you who are more technically advanced is Eclipse, the standard package, Windows 32 or 64 bit depending on what you are. Don't worry about it if you don't know what these are, I'll show you in a minute. You'll need Java JDK and Java itself, both 32 bit or 64 bit. So what are these and what do you need them for? So, first thing we're going to do is, if you don't know what Java is, you probably shouldn't be watching this tutorial. But Java is a programming language, it's an open object oriented programming language, which means it's really good with using buttons, groups and everything like that, and it's really easy to use, if you know. If you don't have any previous knowledge of this, I will try to hopefully provide you that along the way. Um, first thing you need to know before we get started is what bit type your operating system is. This works on Linux, Windows and Mac. All of them, pretty much. So, I can only show you Windows at the moment. If I get a Linux machine, I will show you that. But for now, Windows only. It should work on XP, 7, 8 and uh, Vista. But I'm on Windows 7, as you can see. For those of you who watch my other tutorials and think this setup looks a bit different, I'm running a virtual machine so I can show you live what I'm doing. Hopefully. So what we're going to do is go to the start bar down the bottom. I'm going to right click on my computer or computer and click properties. And pretty much on every single one it should bring up roughly the same screen. And you are looking for your system type and you will see it says 32-bit operating system that means I'm a 32-bit usually if you have over 3 gig of RAM which is here random access memory and um, then you'll probably be 64-bit but make sure ju just check up in case so if, you, if it's not there try going to your device manager which is in, sometimes there sometimes in your control panel you might be able to find it out in here might I'm 100% sure this should work on a laptop PC and everything as well so once you've got your bit type, let's get started. So first thing is, what is Eclipse? An Eclipse stands for an IDE, an Integrated Development Equipment, pretty much. And what it does is basically provide you with loads of features in order to actually use. So you could, by default, you could just open up Notepad. So we could type Notepad, and we could begin writing Java. That's it. We may need to download Java JDK so we can export it, but that's it. What Eclipse does is provide you with functions such as spell checker. It gives you a nice layout window. It links all your projects together. It gives you uh, telesense, which means when you're typing a word, it tries to guess what you're doing. It doesn't put it like most spell checkers. It lists it so you can click what you want. And some of them even give you drag and drop things. So instead of writing seven or eight lines of code for a button, you drag and drop it, it writes it for you. But yeah, so Eclipse is one of these IDEs. And if I go to the internet, you can see a lot of useful um, IDEs from this guy's name here. I am not reading out because of, well, yeah. But you can see a lot of Java IDEs are, they're not in no specific order, but Eclipse at the top and it's got the biggest paragraph so it's kind of say NetBeans is a very good IDE I have used that myself um, it was a lot easier to use the drag and drop feature in that than it was in Eclipse because I couldn't actually find it but I haven't actually used any of the other but I have heard IntelliJ is good so take your pick this one's for Eclipse so now that we've got that out of the way first thing you're going to do is go to Google and type in Eclipse and when you click load it will bring the, the Eclipse website. So what you want to do from here is straight away hit downloads and it will bring you straight to the downloads page in which then you need to choose your bit type. Only choose the Eclipse standard because that's what I'm going to be using but if you're wanting to choose any others such as C, C++, um, Java, IDE, I'm not going to talk about any of these. If you want them, go for it. I'm going to download this. If you remember I'm 32 bit so I'm going to download that one. So if you click 32 bit and then all you do is choose it so you can see I'm from the United Kingdom that's me click it and you will see it will load and it will begin downloading I've already downloaded it so I'm going to stop it because it's 200 megabyte 199 for those of you who are picky so that's in the description if you want it I will link you directly to the downloads page this one so you get a boost so when you've got that you can successfully you've got it you cross it off next what you want to do is type in Java and if you go to Java the top website java.com it's made by Oracle who made virtual machine is what I'm using if you click download 
you will come to the job website. If you click agree and download here, it'll do it online. So if we click it, we can actually do it now. So it'll come download, install it for you once it's done. But I've already downloaded it, so I don't need to. When you do that, just go for it. I downloaded it by clicking see all Java downloads, and then I could actually just click the offline version. That's what I did. So once you've got that installed, you may need to keep rebooting after this. Eclipse, you don't have to install, but yeah. Then after that, go to Google again, or Yahoo, or whatever you use. Type in Java JDK, which stands for Java Development Kit. And all it basically does is provide you with lots of um, tools in order to use Java. So it gives you libraries, which we'll be covering later. Basically, that's giving your computer the brains of what it needs. It's learning them. It's giving them a new book to educate kind of thing. So what you're going to do is go to the top website and you'll see two things. NetBeans and Java Platform. Don't click NetBeans unless you're using NetBeans. We are not using NetBeans so I'm going to click the first one. And what you'll see is it'll load and then what you can do is scroll down and tick agree. They're not going to spam you or anything. You don't need to put any emails in. And then come down and you'll see a large list of operating systems. If you're Linux, choose your Linux. If you're Mac, choose your one Mac. If you're Linux again, choose your other Linux. Otherwise, you've got Windows. I'm 32-bit, which is often known as 86. So don't think that's not the one. Download 86, because 86-bit and 32-bit are the exact same thing, just a different name whereas 64 bit stays the same. So I'm going to click that. The file size is slightly different, don't worry about that. But once you download that, you should have all the three files you need. So I can now cross this off and you'll get these three. So the first one you want to install is JRE, which is Java. So that's the Google Chrome one which was downloading. So just click it and click yes, it should begin straight away. It'll come up with this. You don't need to change the destination folder, just ignore that. Just simply click install. It'll preparing to install. Then it'll come onto this bit here and it'll be saying 3 million devices. It's an interesting little read. Um, basically, it's saying Java is supported on computers, printers, routers, cell phones, which is phones for people not in America. Blackberries, Kindles, parking meters, blah, 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 blah. It's over 3 billion devices, so you can see Java's very widely used. So I'm going to let that run and hopefully speed it up in the edit. So let's see. So, Java has been done, and all we simply do is click close. Now, you could refresh, but I don't really need to refresh. You're going to see it's going to come up and try to verify it, and then it's saying, right, you Java has been successfully installed. So, what we can do is click verify, and it'll basically what this will do, click all, always run on this site, it's safe-ish. And then it'll basically say, do you have the correct version of Java? If not, here's the update. But we know we've got the correct one, well, I think I have, I hope I have. But yeah, it's going to say, do you want to allow it? Just click run, it'll allow it, because it's trying to access your computer. Congratulations, you have the newest version. Easy. That's it, that's that one done. So I can successfully delete that. Next one you want to install is Java JDK. This is the platform tool. So I'm going to open it up, and I'll just click yes. And you'll see we get this. It'll wait, configure for a minute, then you click next. You see, you get these two, ignore it. If you want to change the destination folder, go for it, but I really wouldn't recommend it because Eclipse is default um, assigned to that version if you've done it the right version. Click Next, and it'll begin to install. So I'll let that go, speed it up. So it's done, and we can successfully come back and click Close. So that's Java JDK done. We can get rid, and it's done. Easy. So the final step is Eclipse. Now if you're on a Mac or a Linux, I don't know what type, file type this will come in, but on Windows it came in a zip file. It could come in a RAR, a tar.zj is it? tar.gwar, I don't know. Um, just have a look at it, it should come default available to um, un, well, extract. So basically right click and choose extract all. It'll say do you want to install in this place? Yes, that is in my downloads, which is here. Downloads and click extract. It'll go blah blah blah. Basically all it is is a folder and it's taped it up really tightly. That's all it's done. Compressed it. That's what it's basically done. Taped it up. So what you are doing by extracting it is cutting that tape and releasing the files inside. As you can see it's creating it and copying all the files from inside there out. So imagine you've got a big box full of polystyrene and loads of books. You've cut the box open which is extracted, which is open the um, raw file and then you're taking the books out. And all you're doing is you're taking the books out. So this is all it's doing. You've got 216 books yeah, to take out. So I'll let that go. 
So it's finally, finally done. And you see it opened the new window and closed the other one. So if we go back, you will see that we have two files now. The compressed zip here and the folder. So just get rid of the zip file unless you want to back up it. Uh, I've got it backed up. So we're going to go in and we're going to go in again. And you'll see that we have some folders. This usually looks like what you see in the program files. If you don't know what the program files is, may as well educate you while you're here. Click start, computer. Your program files is where Windows defaultly installs everything. Mac, I'm not sure, but Linux has file directory or something. I'm not 100% sure. But if you go into your C drive on Windows and program files, if you're 64 bit, you will have program files and then another one, bracket saying x86. And that's just diff that's just your. Um, 32-bit files, whereas on here it only has one. So if you go in, you can see we have, this is your program files. So if I were to say go in Java, which we've just installed, you have JDK and JRE, and as you can see, it's all different stuff. I could go into Microsoft Games, Chess, all different stuff. So this is usually what you have there. You can put this in there if you like, there's nothing stopping you. I'm not going to. I'm just going to simply right click and run as administrator. It's always better to do this because then you get them extra permissions in case Windows has been weird. On Linux, you may have to sudo open it if you know what it means. And on Mac, I believe that is the same for you too. Use your terminal to do that. I'm pretty sure you may have to use your terminal to do this anyway. So the first thing it'll do is when it loads, is come up with this workspace launcher. All this basically is, is where is your saves going to be. So by default, it's C users damn workspace. So if I go my computer, C users damn workspace. So it'll put it here. That's okay. We'll let it do that. So what I'm going to do is click use this as default and do not ask again. Otherwise, it'll pop up every time and click OK. Then what I'll do is create that folder and configure itself to store it in there. So as you can see, workspace, it's stored, it's going to store all our projects in there. Now we're not going to work on a project today, I'm simply going to show you how to open it up. It may seem silly, but a lot of, I did originally struggle with this because there were so many types of ways to do it. So there's Eclipse. If you get any errors popping up, something like JDK is not right, you're attempting to use a 64-bit, you've done something wrong, go back. If you're on a 64-bit machine, only use 64-bit stuff. So if you're wanting to link it to Office or something, um, open Office, use 64-bit else you run into so many errors. So Java JDK, Java Eclipse 64-bit. If you're on 32-bit, run 32-bit. It's the only way to work it back. So, tutorial straight there if you want to go on. I actually don't recommend it because it messes up when I tried it, but go for it if you like. Um, basics, files, edit, navigate, search, project, run, blah, blah, blah. We'll look into that more when we do. One thing the tutorial will tell you to do is go window, open perspective, and Java browsing. The tutorial says click Java, don't we buy it. You have more here, there you go, proper Java layout. So tutorials down here, projects, blah, blah, blah. We'll explain it all when we get there. So thank you for watching. I really hope you liked it. Um, please join my Facebook group and my Twitter down below if you did like it. I'll hopefully upload some Java tutorials soon. It's a really good language and I do like it. It's a lot like C Sharp if you've ever used it. There are minor differences, but it's a lot the same when you see it. So thank you for watching. I really hope you liked it and I'll see you next time.